The first and most important thing that a prostitute takes her time with her beauty. She dresses up. She prepares herself. She packages herself. She dresses for her target so that when her target sees her, her target is moved. Her perfume is deliberate. Her hair is deliberate. Her dress is deliberate. Her perfume might be maybe amouage, interlude, perfume for kings. Her, her shoes may be Prada. Her dressing may be on point. Everything is deliberate. Why? Because of her target. So question one, why do Christians dress poor? Because people address you by the way you dress. My leader, exceptional ego, said that your humility is what is killing you. At one time, I said I didn't want a car. My brother, when I entered Dubai a few times, I changed my mind. Quick. I quickly changed my mind. A few of my colleagues, some people, they went to buy me a 570. I didn't buy the car. They bought it for me. They said we would not allow you because if your mind should go down, the company goes down. It's a function of the leadership. If the leadership goes down, the system is dead. So if your family is going to progress, you as leader, as a husband, you have to come up. If there's a failure in your family, it's traceable to the husband. If there's a failure in your company, it's traceable to the leadership. If there's a failure in your department, it's traceable to the leadership. So if you want your leadership, to, if I see your department, I know the size of your leadership. That's all. I don't need to look left. A prostitute takes time to dress. Dress for your address. Don't come for RFF meetings or don't come for to, to, to church with, with your shirt with Mount, um, what do you call it, map of East Africa on one side and you are trying to say we are Christians. There is no, if you are, if you are if you, okay, like me, sometimes when I buy my clothes and I'll tell my colleagues, come. I want to give like everything out of my clothes. So some of you, your houses are too full with clothes. Empty it. Look for brothers in church who don't have shirts, who don't have trousers, and give them. Until you give out, none will come back into you. None will come back. None will come back. If you have two cars in your house and one parking space, give one car out. Give one car out. Try God and see what happens. And I'm saying it deliberately because I've given out cars. I've given out shirts. I've given out. And I've seen what has happened. I have a problem with my wardrobe. It does not want to stop filling up. When I fill it up, I push it out. It fills up itself. How the clothes come? Some of those clothes, I don't buy them. They find their way to me. Give and it shall be given. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Running over. Dress for your address. When I was working with my team, working with my team, I now said that if I go anywhere, how do they see me? How do they see Mike? How do they see this? How do they see my colleagues? I say, in case they, like when they wanted to arrest Jesus, they looked at Jesus. They said, which one of them is Jesus? Because they were all looking alike. That was why I decided that cars should be bought for my colleagues. I cannot have a Jeep and my colleague will have a sedan, God forbid. So that in case they want to shoot me, they can shoot him. 